In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate one simple free plugin for WordPress that allows us to do a simple job, and that is create custom registration, login pages, and also account pages that completely bypass the normal WordPress pages. It also keeps the users out of the back end of your website when they want to change details about their particular account. If this interests you, stick around because I'm going to show you how to do all that in this video. Now there are lots of plugins, both free and commercial versions, that allow you to do the same kind of thing. It allows us to get rid of the default WordPress login and registration pages and make something a little bit more customized. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a look at quite a few of those in action. But today, we're going to focus on one simple free one. I'm going to take you through the whole process of installing, setting this up and creating your own customized pages. So from the dashboard of WordPress, we just jumped into the ad plugins and we're going to look for Profile Builder. And this is a completely free, but it also has some add-ons if you want to purchase those that give you extra functions. But to be honest, you don't really need them for what we're going to cover today. So you can see there's the plugin. We're going to just simply install that now. We're going to go through the process of setting everything up. And the nice thing with this particular plugin is it creates the three key pages we want, login, registration, and profile pages for us. So we're going to take a look at how we use those. So let's just activate the plugin. Once we've done that, we can then take a look at the options that are available. So you can see this now takes us over to Profile Builder Free, gives us the ability to create the form pages if we want, also gives us some extra information about the different features that we have available and also some of the things we can look at through add-ons. Let's say create those form pages. That's going to create the edit profile, login and register as you can see. So once we've done that, now we can go through the process of setting things up. Then we can drop it into WordPress and we can start styling those using Elementor or Elementor Pro. If we jump into any of these pages and take a look, you'll see all that's been created as a simple short code that associates it with the relevant sort of profile builder section. So in other words, we've got the login, we've got the registration, and we've got the user account. Now, if we go to the left-hand side, you can see we've got four options under the profile builder section. Your basic information, your settings, the form fields you want to use, which you can enable or disable and customize, and also some of the add-ons. Now, before we take a look at all the settings, let's take a look at what add-ons are available. Now, some of these are paid for, some of them are completely free. So you can see it tells us this is compatible with my version of Profile Builder. In other words, it's compatible with the free version. So you can see we've got things like paid member subscriptions, translate options. We've also then got things like WooCommerce Sync, client portals, and so on. So if you are looking for something, especially like if you're in the, the EU and you need GDPR compliance, there are options that are built into this that are completely free. You just simply download, add those in, and you get extra functions. I'm not going to cover those. I just want to show you how we can create these key pages. So let's come back over to our basic information. You can see that takes us back into the first section we saw where we created our initial pages. It also just gives you some information about the different modules that are available. We come into the settings section. This is where we need to go through and do some of the basics. So you can see we've got four separate tabs. First one, the general settings, is where we go through and set up the key components of this particular plugin. We can load in the CSS styling that's part of this particular plugin as well. Now, I'm going to disable that because it, I want to let Elementor control the way that my form elements look. But if you want to, you can leave those in there. And also, you can see you can check out the default CSS file if you want to go in and make tweaks to that. Email confirmation, whether you want to activate that. So if someone registers on your website, do you want them to get an email confirmation? So you can set that to be yes or no, up to you, depending upon how you want to set up your WordPress website. You've then got the roles editor activated, which this decides who can see the various different pieces of information. So you can see you decide who is a user on your website, get notified via email to approve multiple users at once from the WordPress user interface. So you can see this gives you extra level of control again. We've then got options for things like allow users to log in with either the username and or the email. Now, you may want to restrict this or you may want to leave it open. It's entirely up to you and you do have three options available to you there. You then have the minimum password length and the minimum password strength. Now, I would recommend that you set this to a minimum of eight characters. And I would also say that you want the minimum password strength. And I would say set that to be strong. This is going to make sure that you enforce anybody that registers on your website to have a minimum of eight characters in length and also quite a complex password to ensure that hacking your website through the login and registration is made much more difficult. Once we've done that, we can save the changes. 
we can take a look at some of the other tabs. If we jump over to the admin bar, you can see then this chooses the role to show the admin bar. So you can see based upon the sort of plugins you may have installed, you'll have things like shop manager if you've got WooCommerce installed, customer and so on. By default, you'll have administrator, editor, author and so on. So you can specify whether you want to use default, whether you want to show this or hide this. Again, entirely up to you. You then have content restrictions. Now, these are the kinds of things that if you want to restrict access to parts of your website, you can enable this and then you can use that in conjunction with the profile builder. I don't want to use any of that, but it's there if you want to take a look at it and you can see how it works. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Finally, we have private website. So if you wanted to set your website up, though, no one could actually get access to it without having a registered account and logging in, then you can set that up at this point as well. Again, I'm going to leave that. I just want those login and registration pages. So once we've done that, we've got the key things in place. If we jump over to the form fields, you can see that we can go through and see all of the forms that are available. So you can see we've got select the different options and so on. We can come in and we can see which forms elements are default, which ones are required, which we can edit if we want to. So for example, with the name, we can click on edit on there. And we then have the option to specify what the name of it is, the field. So you can see we can choose what type of field it is. And if we want to add a description and we can do that as well. So we have a ton of options available that allow us to go through and customize, enable and disable what we want to with our forms. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can now start to integrate this with our design. So at the moment, we have those key pages. If we come back up to our basic information, view our form pages, you can see there's our key pages, the profile, login, and registration. Next thing you want to do is actually go through and set those up. So if we come into the login section and click in there, you can see we now have the option for edit with Elementor. So if we want to use a page builder like Elementor or Visual Composer or any of those, we can do that and we can simply take this particular short code and use that in our design. So what I want to do is create a completely clutter free login page without any distractions of headers and footers and so on. So once someone clicks on the login, they can take it to this very simple, clean page and it's all styled up the way we want it to be. So it's very easy. All we need to do is simply set things up through Elementor in this example. So we're going to click to set up the Elementor canvas as the page that we want to use. This gives us completely clean. There's no headers, footers, no nothing to do with our template on there. We'll hit update. And then once we've done that, we can simply come in and edit with Elementor. So we click to go into the Elementor editor. Then we've got full control over how we want this to look. So you can see at the moment, we've got this little section at the top, which is it's automatically basically pulled in the short code for us, which is fine. We can use that. And we can use that as the basis for what we want to do anyway. So if you go ahead and select that row, we can now start creating the layout that we want. With that in mind, all we're going to do is just control a few things on here. So we're going to say we want to have no gap on there. The height, we're going to say fit to screen. So that'll sort of position that and make it no matter what size screen, we can centralize this content. And then we can go ahead and style everything. Now I'm just going to speed this process up because you don't need to see me styling this just so you can see quickly run through how everything is done. So I'm going to go through and do that right now. So with everything set up now and styled, we're good to go ahead and set this up to be the login page. So what I'm going to do is come back out of the edit with Elementor option. Just making sure everything is the way you want it to be. And you see there's the link that we need, which is login-2. So if we click to open that up, there's our animation. You can see it says I'm currently logged in. So I want you to see the login message. So that's fine. What we are going to do is just simply copy this. Once we've done that, we're going to jump back over into our website. We're going to come into our theme panel for this example. We're going to go into my library. Now, this is because I'm using Ocean WP, and if I want to use any templates, I have to do that through the my library section. However, if you're using Elementor Pro, you may be going through the templates. It's all the same kind of thing. All I want to do is come in and edit this, and I'm going to set up my login and registration button. So I know this is my login button, so all I need to do is drop my link in there there's my link, hit update. And if we come back over to our test page and refresh this, so let's simply click that login button and that'll then take us over to our new login page. And as you can see, it's all animated. We've got rid of any distractions on there. The form is all styled at the way you want it to be styled as part of our design and everything is looking pretty cool. 
Now, one of those things that let a lot of these plugins and other methods of creating custom login and registration pages down is that if you input the wrong or incorrect information, it'll then forward you through or redirect you through to the normal WordPress pages, which means it kind of jumps you out of that loop of the custom design that you've created, which isn't ideal. However, this one doesn't do that. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. If I come in and I insert some information and I put wrong login details in, once I hit login, It'll check those details and it'll come back with the same page, same form with an error message saying that you've inserted incorrect information. Please go through and actually try to log in again. So you can see that this is one of those things that makes the whole process just that little bit more streamlined. So when you do try to log in and put the wrong information in, you don't get dumped out into the normal WordPress pages. So that's pretty cool. So that's the login page. Let's take a look now at repeating this process with the registration page, and then we'll see how we can disable the key normal WordPress login registration pages and so on to make sure that we only have our customized versions available on the site. So the process is exactly the same. If we click on the register page, we can come in and just set this up to be the canvas. We'll update that. Then we'll edit it with Elementor. So we simply come in, and you can see we're now presented with the normal editor. Now I'm going to quickly again go ahead, set this up so it's all looking the way that we want it to look, and then we'll take a look at the register option. So there's the finished design for the registration page. Let's just jump over to the front end of the site and we can take a look at what it looks like with the form in place. If we jump over, you can see everything is styled consistently with the actual login form. So everything is looking pretty cool. And if we go through and register, that will register an account. And as you can see, we've got send these credentials via email as one of the options. So it's very easy to go through and set all this up, make sure your style looks good and also integrate it into the design that you want. Now, the third and final page I want to show you is the actual account page. What this does is it means that you don't have to rely upon the end user logging in and then actually jumping over into the dashboard of your WordPress website where they can then go through their profile. This gives a completely independent profile page that they can make changes to passwords, names, and so on. So let's take a look at that. So once you log in and you go through to your profile page, you can see this is now a completely customized profile page where the user can edit any of the relevant field information, including their password. Now you can add and take away from these fields if you want to include more. You can do that during the registration process and also allow them to make changes at this point. So it's very easy to integrate into your design. Now there are a couple of things that we want to do with this. If we don't want the end user to see those actual normal default WordPress registration login, so on pages, we need to have some way of redirecting or hiding them. Now there are lots of ways you can do this. And one way that I'm going to show you now is by using 301 redirects to do this. Is it the perfect way of doing things? Probably not, but it's a quick, easy way to do things. And again, like I say, in future videos, we'll look at maybe doing this in a little bit more detail and making things a little bit more secure. But this is a nice, simple, cosmetic way of making those redirects. So what we need to do is go and grab ourselves a nice, simple 301 redirect plugin. There are tons available, and the one I'm going to use is just simply th simple 301 redirects. We'll install that, and it has one simple job. It redirects pages using the 301 method. So we'll activate that. Once we've done that, we can just come over to the left-hand side once it's activated and under tools, sorry, under settings, we now have 301 redirects. In there, we can simply put in the URL we want to redirect from and what we want to redirect to. So all we need to do now is just simply put in all of the different pages we want to redirect. So you can see WP login is the default login page. We could say we want that to go through to a specific page, which we know is our new login page. So we'll just paste that into the redirect hit save changes, and then we can go through and just do that for all the relevant different pages. And now it'll automatically be updated that if anybody tries to use the old WP login PHP or the WP login link or WP admin and so on, we can set those so they'll actually just forward through to the new page that we want. So let's just test that out. So there we go, there's our link. If we just hit enter on there, you'll see that what happens is instead of it displaying the normal page, we'll now get redirected to our personal new login section. So like I say, we just need to repeat that for all the relevant key pages for the registration, login, account, and so on, just to make sure that if anybody puts those links in, they will then be redirected to the relevant new pages that we've created. So it's a very simple method to do this. So we now have our own custom login, registration, and profile pages, all to take away from showing the normal default WordPress pages. And that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Is it the best solution out there? Probably not. 
but it's a free solution that does pretty much everything we want and has some really great add-ons that are completely free as well as some commercial ones you may want to check out if you need that extra functionality. So what do you think of this method? Is this something you can see yourself employing in your own websites? Have you come across a better solution, preferably something that's free that you think does this or does it better? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback and I can check those out and see what they are and if we can integrate those into another future video. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on this video and everything else we cover on the channel, so please pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know why you didn't enjoy it. Let me create better content for you. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.